I'll be starting with this particular kind of a proceeding. I'm acting as an opening batsman for this uh, particular kind of a session on understanding research publications, right? Now see, when you do any kind of a research work, later on you have to publish the papers, okay? So research without publication, it is of no use, okay? And uh, why it is important, you will come to know by the end of my talk as such, right? So uh, in case of research publications, there are several nuances in the 21st century because uh, in what used to happen in 28th century that uh, uh, many researchers, they used to publish in a uh, large number of journals and most of the journals, they were of very uh, uh, of high quality, reasonable quality, okay? And most of the indexes at that particular point of time, they were not available, right? But oh, eventually with time, you will find that uh, there are many nitty gritties which has come as far as the research publications they are concerned. And therefore, this particular kind of a talk on understanding research publications. Now, what are the things that I'm going to cover in next uh, 30 to 35 minutes or so, uh, which includes how you reach to the edge of the knowledge. Okay, the very first point, right? Uh, why, why one has to publish? That is another important thing. Then types of publication document, differentiating the journals with other kind of a publications, classification, authenticity, UGC care, predatory journals, okay. Uh, paid versus unpaid quality metrics, okay, and then quartile, okay, and some of the benchmarks that are there normally for the PhD students, because that is where uh, the, uh, as a researcher, as a PhD student, you publish your first paper normally. Many times even postgraduate students also, they do it, right? Now, how does a publication look? So here you can see in this particular picture, I have given you the, uh, two publications I have published uh, of my many papers. These are some of the recent publication and, and you can see here in this particular, this is the name of the journal. Okay, like how every book it has got a title. Similarly, every journal it has got a title. So this is a journal of contaminant hydrology is one of the title and then you can see that this is published by Elsevier. You can see the logo there. Then this is a title of the research work that was carried out and then followed by you will see that uh, the authors, those who have carried out that particular research work, and this is the address, what it is called as affiliation uh, of the publications, okay? Uh, affiliation is nothing but uh, to which organization these authors, they uh, belong. And then you will find some keywords and there is an abstract of the entire research work and then introduction. And I will come to uh, the various components that are there, the structure of the research publication overall as such. This is another research paper. Okay, so this is published in uh, Springer. So just to show you the sample examples as such, right? Now, this is a bookish kind of a definition uh, because before going ahead with the publication, it is necessary for you to know that uh, what is research. So you will find in many books and papers, research is a process of systematic inquiry, okay? That involves collection of data. So you have to ask a research question, a very, very, very robust question which nobody has answered earlier, okay? You have to ask a very new question. There is no point in carrying out a research which has already been carried out in the past. So you have to ask a new question and you, so that is an inquiry. And then based upon that particular kind of a research question, you formulate a hypothesis and then uh, uh, you apply certain kind of a methodology to it and you collect the data and ultimately you will find that research is being carried out. So collection of data, document, uh, critical information, and then you further analyze it, okay? So ultimately at the end of the research, you generate certain kind of a facts, and these facts, they are completely based upon some kind of a research work. And uh, uh, these are the true facts on which one can believe, okay? So generation of dependable knowledge, it comes into the picture, right? So ultimately you generate or establish certain kind of a facts and reach to new kind of a conclusions, right? At the end of the research work. So, till date, since most of the students, they are sitting here, you have dealt with several other kind of a materials, like for example, books, novels, magazine, newspapers, etc. Right? 
And in the earlier slide, I have shown you the, uh, how the research paper it looks into. So here I have not mentioned research paper. We'll come to that particular point. So the fundamental question is that at what stage the research it begins, right? Okay, how do you reach to the edge of the knowledge in your specific domain, right? Normally, if you are reading a book on, let us say, cancer, so everything about cancer, it is written in that particular book. But in cancer also, there are several other kind of uh, domains, subdomains, sub-subdomains. And research is being carried out in a very narrow domain, a very small domain, right? So how do you reach to the edge of the knowledge, okay? Because research is first to know the known and then know the unknown. Okay, first of all, you, as a researcher, it is necessary for you that to know that what has been investigated earlier before you started the research work. Mm -hmm. And then you have to look for some newer kind of a questions, newer kind of a inquiry in order to go ahead with that. Right? So how you will go to the edge of the knowledge? So you imagine this particular kind of a circle which consists of human knowledge. Right? Now, how you are reaching to the edge of the knowledge, this is the edge of the knowledge, okay, which is existing in the world as of today, right? So by the time you finish your elementary school, you know a little bit. So you can see a colored dot in the center, right? Now see, at what stage you reach to the edge of the knowledge, that I am trying to explain you. By the time you finish your high school, you know a bit more. Then you can see that the radius and diameter of these colored circles, they are increasing. Okay? Now, when you go for your bachelor's degree, now, the moment you go into the bachelor, there is specialization, it starts, right? So you have physics, microbiology, economics, law, etc. So therefore, you will find some kind of a perturbation there, right? By the time you complete your master's degree, I believe most of them, they are PhD and master's stu students sitting here, right? By the time you complete your master's degree, maybe it is MBA, MSc, whatever it is, you know a little bit more and you will find that that particular kind of a pointer it is going ahead, right? Now see, in spite of the fact that you have completed your master's degree, okay, and many of them, they are very, very proud, okay, I have master's kar liya hai, okay, the question is that have you reached to the edge of the knowledge? The answer is no for that, right? See, this particular edge, it is very far away from that particular kind of a edge. You haven't reached to the edge of the knowledge and till master's degree, you will find that most of the studies that we carry out, it is from the textbooks, okay? Nobody has referred to the journals, right? So the question is, question is how you reach to the edge of the knowledge here, right? So only reading research papers will take you to the edge of the knowledge. Reading research papers, in your domain, suppose if you are working on cervical can cancer, a very narrow area, if you are working on like, like say climate change mitigation, or if you are working on degradation of a very toxic pollutant, okay, something like that. When you will read 200, 300 or 500 papers, uh, paper, research papers, okay, then only it will take you to the edge of the knowledge, otherwise no. So it means that when you start your PhD journey, you have to read so many number of research papers to understand what has been done in the past and then and then only one can go ahead in the right direction by asking a right kind of a question which is completely unanswered in the past, right? Now this number of papers, it depends upon the extent of knowledge that is available in that particular kind of a domain. Like for example, Consumer behavior is one such kind of a area which many of the management people, they carry out research work. Now, you take any topic in consumer behavior and there are not less than 700 research papers, right? Okay, extent of knowledge available in consumer behavior, it is very, very large. Okay, but if you take like uh, some other kind of a area, like you take COVID for that matter, right? You will find that on viruses, there are very less number of papers, okay? We are not talking about viruses in general. We are talking about one specific viral species, okay, which caused the disease, isn't it? So unless and until, so the reasonable number, it is something around 200 to 300 in any domain. You choose any area for that matter, right? Now what happens is that the moment you read so many number of research papers in your specific domain, okay, you become really a master because you know everything about that. Okay, I believe everything at least 70 to 80% of that. Okay, and then 
going through that particular kind of a knowledge, ultimately you start coming up with a large number of research questions, right? So what, in other words, what you are trying to do is you are trying to push that particular kind of a boundary. You ask the research question, okay, you come up with some kind of a hypothesis, right? And through your research work, okay, you add to the existing body of knowledge. Okay, so you are trying to push that particular kind of a boundary by generating a new kind of a knowledge, right? And then one fine day, what happens is that whatever findings, the moment you publish it, you create your own niche, the black color of thing that you can see. The moment you publish four, five or 10 papers in a particular kind of a area, immediately the academic world starts recognizing you, okay, that you have done a good quality of research work. The moral of the story is that you have to always keep pushing. That is very, very important, right? So basically, what is research? Research is means finding or exploring more of less. I'm directly answering this question, right? The answer is B for that. You take a very small, narrow area, a niche area, and you have to explore it to the fullest. That is what is research. So when you talk about any kind of a research publication, it is nothing but add addition of a new kind of a knowledge to the previous body of knowledge, right? Okay. Now, having, having said that, now let us understand what are these publications. So let us jump to the publications. For that, you should know that what is the research cycle overall. But I will not go into the details. I have just cut short that cycle into three different components. The first is research problem, then followed by research in action, and then followed by publication. So this cycle, it goes on continuously. Okay, unless and until there is some kind of a problem, one cannot carry out a research work. There has to be a problem, right? Okay. Once you have a research problem, then you come up with a research, uh, you identify the gaps that are existing in the research papers, okay, or in that particular kind of a research. From that gap, you formulate a research question. From that research question, you formulate a hypothesis. Hypothesis is nothing but a probable answer to a particular kind of a question, okay. It, may, it might get satisfied, it may not get satisfied over a period of time, right? And then, you go ahead with the research design, right? Then once you have planned everything, then research in action. Actually, you execute that particular kind of a plan, right? And then when you carry out a substantial piece of research work, the next important aspect is that you have to go ahead with the publications. You have to publish that. Because unless and until you publish, that particular kind of a research work will never get some kind of a authenticity or validity. Somebody has to check it. You cannot pat onto your own back, okay, and say that I have done a good piece of research work. No. Okay, somebody else has to do it, and therefore there is a certain kind of a review process. We'll come to that particular point as well. And since no research work it is complete in all sense, every research publication, it gives certain kind of a research gaps, and again you go to the research problem. Okay, this is how the research it goes in a forward direction. So what are these research publications? So publication, basically, it is a legal kind of a uh, term, okay, a technical term, important in copyright legislation. If you see the copyright legislation, you will find that this particular kind of a term, it is there. But going, uh, cut, uh, cutting the long story short, basically, in simpler terms, any type of publication is an authentic document, like newspaper, magazine, books. But you will find that newspaper, it has a life of only one day. Okay, some, there, something happens, it has been published in the newspaper, okay, and the life is over once that particular day it has gone. But research publications, they are also a very authentic uh, document, okay, which is completely based upon a scientific kind of a research work. And it gets only published through peer review process. In newspaper, peer review is not there. But it is some kind of authentic document because something has happened and you, you are publishing it. Right, same is the case with the magazines uh, and to some extent with the books also. But in research publication, you will find that a very stringent peer review process or scrutiny, it normally happens, right? Second question is why publish, right? Why you are aware of Ramayana and Mahabharata? It is because somewhere it has got documented, isn't it? And even today in 21st century, we learn a lot of lessons from Ramayana and Mahabharata because uh, it, it, uh, that entire story, it went from generation to generation and we learn our lessons from that. So 
basically what is being done is that the knowledge that was created it is being archived okay right like how you have books in the library okay why why you are aware of your domain it is because of the books that you have read in your domain so you will find that science it always grows advances through a communal collection of knowledge okay that is very important okay and it is always available for being challenged even you can challenge einstein's theory that was proposed uh, a century back okay very recently this year's nobel prize in uh, physics okay uh, uh, they have proved that einstein was wrong at that point of time okay and for which they got the nobel prize uh, 2022 physics nobel prize right for entanglement theory so you will find that always it is being challenged revised and added to okay because many different tools techniques instrumentation they keep coming and uh, you will find that uh, many newer things they are being explored over a period of time or discovered over a period of time research journals are the authentic documents and therefore journals have been created for that to uh, publish the smaller pieces of knowledge that is being created over a period of time right and as i have said that it is being archived and if you go to any research institution or a university everywhere you will find that there are a large number of journals volumes of journals and uh, uh, you will find that you will get large number of research papers from that now you have many online tools at the same point of time right but publishing it is a hard work but most straightforward way to make the contribution and therefore one has to go for the publication at the same time there are certain motivations also uh, like altruism very strong desire towards research and publishing and self interest like many tangible and intangible benefits also you get from that but the important thing is that research whatever it is being created it is being archived uh, so that the researchers the future researcher it doesn't end up doing the same kind of a research work wasting all kind of a resources right so how research output it is being measured right these are measured by various ways output is measured in terms of research publications when you use publication word it is a all inclusive kind of a term which include journal paper book book chapter proceeding papers case studies etc okay and it is one of the most common method to publish the research findings right then you have a intellectual property like patents copyrights geographical indications right trademark etc uh, so if uh, if there is a potential of process development or product development in your research work then it is necessary to file a patent first and then you have to go ahead with publications vice versa is not true okay you cannot publish first and then file a patent then research project and then technology process method development these are some of the uh, outputs how it is being measured but among these research publications they are the most commonest method now the next question which comes into picture is that how many number of journals they are there so here you can see a graph uh, which shows uh, the uh, number of journals from 1665 in 1665 the first journal came into existence like philosophical transition of royal society so researchers they used to write small letters of their research work and they used to communicate to this royal society and it was reviewed and then it was published in that okay later on eventually it what happened that many disciplines they were created many sub disciplines they were created like earlier it was called as biology okay then again biology was fragmented into microbiology botany zoology virology etc etc and again in virology microbiology you will find that there are several other kind of domains so number of journals over a period of time they increased exponentially as you can see from this particular graph so how many number of journals they are there right i will go to this particular slide first so there is no uh, clear cut figure which is given in the uh, literature but approximately there are 2 lakh number of journals across all the domains 2 lakh journals huge right but you will find that the number of freak or predatory or substandard journals they are more than or close to 1 lakh journals okay because there are many other reasons uh, i cannot tell you all these particular reasons in this uh, uh, talk as such but the number of good quality journals they account for only 50 to 65000 not more than that and this distribution it is given here okay there are certain top indexed bodies okay because 
researchers, scientists, they over a period of time, they realize that since large number of journals, they are coming, uh, how to find out what is the quality of that particular kind of a journal. So they identified some a dozen parameters, like what is the editorial uh, board, what is the focus area of that journal, and there are a large number of things. Based upon which, the Scopus Index body, which is a Elsevier body, and similarly, the Web of Science, they started indexing the journals. And therefore, today, Scopus and Web of Science, they are well-recognized index bodies in the world. So one has to publish only in the journals that are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. Right? Okay, so how many number of journals there are there in Scopus? There are 42,000 uh, number of journals. Uh, broad areas that are being covered, which include science, engineering, management, and social sciences. Web of Science, Web of Science, uh, uh, there are many sub-indexes under Web of Science at the same point of time, like Science Citation Index, Social Science Citation Index, Arts and Humanities Citation Index, Science Citation Index extra, uh, uh, Extended, then uh, Emerging Source Citation Index. Okay, these are some of the sub-bodies. And there are roughly 25,000 journals uh, across all the dif dis different disciplines. And you will find that there are many common journals between Scopus and Web of Science. There are a large number of journals which are indexed in Scopus as well as Web of Science, right? Now, in case of management field, there are different societies or committees, those who have created some different lists. Like, for example, ABDC, Australian Business Dean's Council, okay? Uh, so, so Australian, so definitely the committee is in Australia. So they have created their own list for the management researchers, having 2,800 journals, right? Okay, focusing only on management social science. There are no scientific, hardcore scientific journals here. Same is the case with the uh, Association of Business Schools, USA, ABS listed journals, something around 1,000, again focusing on management and social sciences. And then there are FT50, Financial Times Top 50 Journals. Okay, so 50 stands for, there are only 50 journals management. And there are many other lists also. I will not go into the detail. But uh, these are some of the prominent ones, right? For science and engineering people and biomedical sciences, Scopus and Web of Science, they are very important. Now, in biomedical sciences, there are PubMed, Medline, other kind of indexes as well. But in the recent times, you will find that all the PubMed and Medline journals, they have got index in Scopus and Web of Science. Okay, so there is no point talking in that, right? Then you have a AGC, UGC, listed, UGC care listed journals, okay, right? Now many times a question is being asked that, uh, can I publish in UGC uh, care listed journals? Now here is the answer for that. So UGC care listed journals, it consists of two types of groups, okay, group one, Right? There are approximately 1,500 journals. Uh, journals found qualified through UGC care protocol. They have their own protocol through which they index the journal in this particular kind of a list. Right? And then UGC care list group two, where there are more than 50,000 journals. Journal index in globally recognized database, Scopus and Web of Science, which I have mentioned in my previous slide. Right? Okay. So, if you add this 1500 and this 50,000, sorry, so you will find that 98% of the UGC care journals, they are either Scopus and Web of Science. So need not to talk about UGC care listed journals. Okay. Because even UGC care listed journals also, they talk about Scopus and Web of Science index bodies. Because in the second group, they have directly given the, um, uh, what you can say, the links of the Scopus and Web of Science databases. It also means that the journals that are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science, they are also UGC care listed. Only this 1500 journals, which I am talking about, they are neither indexed in Scopus or Web of Science, which accounts for roughly 2% or so, right? So one should only focus on Scopus and Web of Science index journals, right? The next question is that who publishes this particular kind of a journals? So there are different types of publishers. Commercial publishers like Elsevier, Springer, Taylor Francis, Wiley, and many more, right? There are learned societies also, like Society for Upright Microbiology. They have their own journal, right? A very high impact factor journal. Informs, this is operations uh, research uh, uh, society. Then there are institutions. 
like uh, Oxford, Harvard, and many other institutes, they have their own journals. Uh, so some of these journals, they are either indexed in Scopus, uh, Web of Science, or they are not indexed. And then the fourth is individual. Individual in the sense, even if I want to start a journal, I can start the journal within a month. Okay, I can prepare a fantastic title, uh, then uh, uh, write a, uh, like uh, uh, define the scope, prepare an editorial board, and I have to just write one letter to uh, one of the institution located in Delhi, a CSR institution, NISCARE, and they can give me the ISSN number so I can start the journal. But the question is that the journal started by me, is it indexed in Scopus and Web of Science? Who will publish in that? That is the biggest question, right? But because of the open access policy, you will find that large number of individuals, they have started the journals. And they, these journals, they are in thousands. Okay, you will not believe it. And all of these journals, they are fake journals, right? That one needs to understand. But the journals published by these particular kind of a publishers, they are of good quality, right? There are many more, like Nature Publishing Group, Elsevier, Inform, uh, Inform Springer, Taylor Francis, Sage, Emerald, IJ, and many others, right? So you will find that approximately there are 40 to 50,000 peer-reviewed journals, and uh, whatever that I have listed here, they are publishing almost 70 to 80 percent of the total good quality journals across the world, right? Across all disciplines. Now, there are many misconceptions about the publications as well, right? What are not considered as a research publication? Okay. Papers presented in any conferences, national, international, it is not considered as a publication. It is not, uh, only we are talking about the uh, journal papers here. So they are not considered as a publication. Abstract, extended abstract in conference proceedings, they are not considered as a research publication. Any article or paper uploaded on uh, research network sites, okay, they are not considered as a research publication. Articles in local, regional, national, international newspaper, it, has, it, it, it doesn't have any kind of a value. Remember articles written in magazines and local newspapers or international newspapers, they are the opinions of the authors, right? It is a subjective opinion. My opinion might be different and Dr. Pragya Yadav's opinion might be different. But when it comes to the research, her opinion and my opinion will be same because we are thinking scientifically. So whenever you talk about research, it is an objective kind of opinion. It is based upon certain kind of a facts, right? That you need to understand. Articles published in magazines, okay, of course there are a few exceptions like Harvard Business Review and Economical and Political Weekly even though they are magazines, but they are considered, they have a very huge standing, okay? And they are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. Book reviews published in, uh, book reviews published in the journals, they are not considered. Research paper published in souvenir or any journal not having ISBN or ISSN, okay? ISSN stands for International Standard Serial Number, while ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number, okay? These are some of the features of the good quality journals. They have a very fantastic editor and editorial uh, uh, board members of the journal. They are highly qualified uh, with a uh, uh, huge baggage of research that they have carried out. Okay, having impact factor given by Thomson Reuters, there are many fake impact factors they are also coming nowadays, right? The impact factor, this particular term, it is only used by the Thomson Reuters, what it is now called as Clarivate Analytics or Th uh, Web of Science, right? Uh, and Scopus, uh, it is a different body and uh, Thomson Reuters is a different body, so they cannot use the same kind of a terminology and therefore Scopus uses site score. Okay, it is as good as impact factor. And there is a correlation between impact factor as well as south, uh, uh, site score. Then stringent peer review process. Okay, they never compromise on the quality. Okay, that is very important. Journals having clear scope and focus, index in Scopus, Web of Science, quality uh, quality of papers already published. Uh, uh, quality papers they are published in the journal. The time taken for review, acceptance ratio, formatting, style, final. So all these uh, features they are considered to be as a considered to be as a good quality. Uh, kind of a journal. Features of the fake or predatory kind of a journal. There are several. 
Okay, I have prepared a very huge list of it. Okay, uh, because all the journals they call themselves as a peer review kind of a journal, but uh, hardly they carry out any kind of a peer review. And for the sake of money, they just publish the papers, which is completely wrong, right? So here you can see that uh, 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 they have a lack of peer review system. Okay, uh, many times the manuscript it is accepted as is. Okay, even remember that for good quality journals, even the papers of uh, published by the Nobel laureates many times it is revised and then published. It is not published as is, right? Uh, so journal invites manuscript from the author with the assurance of publication within few days and few weeks, right? It never happens so. Normally any pu good publication, it takes minimum one year for publication. So I've listed large number of them. They have a fake impact factor, okay? Uh, the frequency is irregular, large number of papers they are published in one issue, right? And they are not indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. So all they fall under the category of uh, fake journals, right? What can be published? Okay, there are several things that could be published, right? Any new or original piece of created knowledge, then any vertical or lateral increase in the stock of knowledge, Many times the research is being carried on in an incremental manner, right? If somebody has carried out a particular experiment at 40 degrees, so if you carry it out as, let us say, 15 degrees Celsius, it is an incremental kind of a research work. <coughs> New or original inventions such as instruments, procedures, protocols, methods, experiments, models, strategies, etc., right? New or original discovery of plant, animal species, microorganisms, okay, historical places, novel applications of the stock of knowledge. Maybe that knowledge was created in the 20th century. But now you are, because of the several tools like artificial intelligence and others, you find a novel application of that particular kind of a data, right? So one can publish a base papers based upon that. Then solve new or existing kind of a problem. Okay, testing existing theories or uh, proposing a new kind of a framework or a theories. Uh, elucidating new concept, idea, framework, variable, okay, expansion of past work, policy matter, critic, all these things, they could be published in the form of a research paper. Of course, review paper is also there. These are the different classes of research papers. Okay, broadly, I have classified it uh, like review papers. Either the review paper, it is an overview or it is a comprehensive kind of a review paper, right? Empirical or experimental based research papers based upon primary and secondary data thematic, conceptual, or idea-based research paper, strategy or model formulation-based research papers, theoretical-based research papers, policy-based research paper, case study-based research paper. These are different types of research papers that are, that are being normally published in most of the journals, right? So every journal you will find that it has got a ISSN, International Standard Serial Number, because they are published serially. Uh, they are abstracted and indexed in Scopus Web of Science, okay, and publisher. So all these three things are to be seen very carefully whenever you go ahead with any kind of a publication. So I provide support to uh, all the students as well as faculty members of our university in order to uh, identify the quality of that particular kind of a journal, right? And these are some of the indexes which I have mentioned here, okay. So one should strictly avoid publishing in predatory or substandard kind of a journal because they hardly peer review the things. For the sake of few thousand rupees, they directly publish the paper as is, which takes the research in a completely wrong kind of a direction. Okay. Now, uh, answer one of my questions. Suppose if I give you a building a gift which, is, which has a very weak base, will you stay in that particular building? No because at any one fine day, he, it might fall down. So the base is nothing but a theory. So research, it should go in a right direction, right? Okay. The top priority as far as publishing it is concerned, it should be given to the journal papers, right? So peer-reviewed journal papers, which I have mentioned, uh, publishers and the index bodies, special issue of the, those particular kind of a journals, right? And then, uh, Second priority should be given to research chapters and books because many times uh, they are not being stringently peer reviewed unless and until it is being published by the good researchers. 
and one should give less preference to proceeding papers and extended abstracts, okay? I have prepared this quality quadrant, okay? Which talks about quality of the journal on Y axis and paid journal on the X axis. So I've divided the entire journals of the world into four quadrant. Quadrant one, two, three, four. Quadrant one talks about high quality paid journals. Quadrant two talks about high quality non-paid journals. And more focus should be given on this particular kind of a quadrant. One can publish in these particular journals provided you have the funds. So I have put one condition there. Okay, there is no question publishing in low quality and non-paid journals as well as low quality paid journals, right? So you have to follow this particular kind of a quadrant, right? This Scopus and Web of Science, the journals that are indexed in this, they are also categorized into four different categories based upon the quartile. So top 25, based upon the impact factor, the top 25% of the journals listed in Scopus as well as Web of Science, uh, they are called as a Q1 category journals, okay, quartile one. Similarly, quartile, next 25%, quartile two, next 25%, like from 51 to 75 and then 75 to 100. Uh, so Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Q1, it is of highest quality. Q4, it is of lowest quality, right? So one should avoid publishing in Q4 journals because uh, they are very dynamic in nature. Like many times they do unethical practices and they uh, get removed from the databases. And uh, these are some of the sub-indexes bodies which I have told you. In ABDC listed journal, uh, again, they have four categories like A star, A, B, C. A star being of highest quality and C being of lowest quality. Same is the case with the ABS listed journals as well. I have specially mentioned a note, peer reviewed journals, they're absolutely good for the scientific development, right? And non-peer reviewed, worse for scientific kind of a development. Just a short while ago, I have given you the example of a building which has a weak base. Okay, it will crush down, right? Okay, this is the how we have divided the quartal. Okay, the same thing which I have explained you. Now, many times uh, uh, in most of the universities and institutions, many faculty members and students, they don't have access to the Scopus and Web of Science databases. Okay, so here I have given you the two sites. For Scopus Index Journal, you can freely go into SJR, Skymago Journal Ranking, to this particular kind of a site. You just type SJR, and whatever list you will get, they are Scopus Index Journals. Okay, but uh, the frequency of updation of this particular kind of a site, it is very, very low. And therefore, one should be careful whenever you are selecting any kind of a journal. For Web of Science Index Journal, you can simply type MJL if you don't have a database. What it is called as master journal list and you can uh, see the number of journals area-wise in that particular kind of a field, right? Then let us come to the editorial peer review process. Every journal, because whenever you communicate any kind of your findings to any journal, it is not accepted blindfolded, right? It is being peer reviewed. And uh, peer review is a very strict process. It is a scrutiny of the research work that is being carried out, right? And normally this is a peer review process where you will find that the author is there, editor of the journal is there, reviewer is there, right? Uh, and then uh, you can see that the author has to submit a paper to the editor and then uh, it goes through all this particular kind of a process. It goes to the reviewer, comments are being given. Many times the paper get rejected. 99.9% .9 of the papers, they, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they are sent for revision purpose and then ultimately it gets accepted. So the time taken overall uh, for this uh, publication, right, from communicating to publication, normally it takes from one year to one and a half or two years, right? You will find that this is a general structure of the research paper, like you have a title of paper, name, affiliation, abstract, keywords, okay, introduction, review of literature, where you quote large number of references, methodology, results, discussion, conclusion. This is a general structure of the research paper, right? Many journals, they have started desk rejecting the paper. If they don't find that paper, it is in line with their requirement, they outrightly reject that particular kind of a paper, right? This is a timeline publishing speed of the paper. Uh, even the fastest journal, it takes minimum from submission to print. It takes from as less as two months to as high as eight months. I'm talking about a fastest good quality journal, okay? 
normally normal time it is two years okay because of online system now it has become one or maybe one and a half year right okay nowadays journals they have become very very demanding it is not just sending the manuscript to them there are many other things that are required like cover letter title page separately you have to give the highlights of your research work in four to five points you have to also give a graphical abstract of your paper manuscript uh, declaration supplementary material and other kind of a things so i will skip some of them right this is a strategy for publishing uh, the paper index based strategy which i have created okay probably you will get the slides and you will understand the, uh, those similarly this strategy i have created for the science and engineering people right okay uh, these are some of the practical problems associated with the publication which i have listed down here so for a successful paper publication there are four important things that are required a robust question theory that you are using the methods that you have applied in order to generate the data uh, uh, so data and the overall story that you are telling okay a compelling story in every university you will find that there are certain norms for publishing the paper during the phd in symbiosis we have two papers as i have mentioned right so i will skip some of them uh, this is not part of my lecture so i will directly jump on to uh, the last slide uh, this is very important for you please do remember that research is always doing something new innovative okay you cannot repeat the research work carried out in the past there has to be some novel element a new element no matter how small it is google is not a synonym for research many students they copy the stuff from google and prepare their dissertation completely wrong you write only one page but write original right originality is undetected plagiarism we have a plagiarism software so whatever that you copy it could be detected so final mantra is that publish and prosper or otherwise you perish if you want to stay in the academics so this is a difference between a good quality research and a low quality research here you can see einstein sitting here high quality research law of gravity because he saw the apple falling down and this chap oranges also follow the law of gravity low quality research okay 